Hello everyone. So we'll start with the fact label method. Now you can use this method to solve any number of problems. And we're going to look at the generic form first, and then we'll look at how we can solve this non-chemistry based question. So the general form will be write the unit that you need, then an equal sign, then any value you're given without forgetting the units. So anything you are given goes next. Then you have to multiply by a conversion factor. Now this conversion factor is going to have a unit at the bottom unit that unit that you're going to cancel so the unit to cancel and at the top you're going to write the unit to keep or the unit you want now this portion here is called your conversion factor okay now we're going to use this template to solve this, this non-chemistry problem okay so here it's asking how many meters in 2.5 kilometers so here we need meters so we're going to write we need a certain number of meters okay and we're given 2.5 kilometers so 2.5 kilometers again don't forget the units then we write a conversion factor now you'll always be given a conversion factor or you'll use whatever you have in your toolbox you pull it out and you'll use that um, in this case we know should know that we have 1000 meters for every one kilometer or is equal to one kilometer now the unit we want to cancel is going to go at the bottom and the unit we want to keep remains on the top okay so that we can cancel out these units and we get meters all right so one the number one is associated with kilometers the thousand here is associated with meters so we write thousand meters next to meters or a thousand next to meters then we already saw that kilometers and kilometers cancels out and we get 2.5 times 1,000 and that's 2,500 meters and that makes sense. We have 2,500 meters in one kilometer to answer that question. Okay, that is a factory method that will help you solve many other sorts of problems moving forward. In our first example, we're going to answer this question. So it says, how many moles are in 70 grams of C2H6? Now, that is ethane, and we'll get to that molecule in just a minute. Let's write down what we know. So we have a mass of 70.0 grams, right? And we need moles. Moles of, again, these are subscripts. Okay, so this is what we need, this is what we're given. The other thing that we need to consider is molar mass. So we have to calculate the molar mass of ethane, and that actually is 30 grams per mole. Now to figure that out, just recall that we have two atoms of carbon and six hydrogen. Each carbon has a molar mass of 12, and each hydrogen has a molar mass of 1. Add those together and you get 30 grams per mole. Then we're going to plug it into the factor label methods generic template and we'll do that now. So we need moles right, of C2H6. We are given, here the question gives us mass, so it's 70.0 grams. Right, we're going to multiply that by a conversion factor. Now here's where this method really helps. We know that we're going to cancel out grams. Right, we have to cancel out grams and we need moles. So now that we know the units for the conversion factor, determining the conversion factor becomes a lot easier because we can go back and look at what we know. So pull out from our toolbox, what is it that has these units? Now the order doesn't necessarily matter at this point. We need something that has both moles and grams, or grams and moles. And hopefully um, molar mass comes to mind if it hasn't already. So now all we're going to do is plug in the number associated with the unit. So 30 is associated to grams, that's mass. Right, so we write 30, and there doesn't appear to be a number associated with one, but we know that it's 30 grams for every one mole, so one. So what we're really doing here is we're taking mass divided by molar mass. You do that, we get 2.3 repeating. Okay, that'll be moles of C2H6, right? And that's our first question. Now in this question, we're going to solve for the number of molecules, and this is an extension from the previous question where we determined that the number of moles of ethane, C2H6, is 2.3 continuing. Okay, now here we're being asked to find the, the number of molecules, 
Okay, so not moles, we already have that. And again, the mantra in our class is when you don't know what to do, or even if you do, the first thing you should do after you have everything balanced is find the number of moles. So since we already did that in the previous question, let's plug this into our fact label method. So we need the number of molecules, right? This is what we need and what we're given or what we've determined now, again, you're using moles, is 2.3 continuing moles of C2H6. Okay, we're going to multiply that by a conversion factor. The unit you want to get rid of goes at the bottom. We want to get rid of moles, right? So we write moles of C2H6. And the unit we want to keep, so number of molecules, is at the top. Okay, now hopefully this rings a bell, and we know that Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Number of what we call units. Now these units can be anything. It can be molecules, particles, atoms. In this case we're going to call it molecules for every one mole. We're using this taken out of our toolbox of knowledge and we're using that conversion factor to solve this problem. So the number one is associated with moles and Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23 is associated with the number of units or in this case molecules. Now look, molecules molecules cancels out and what we're really doing here is 2.3 continuing times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 and we get 1.40466 I always like to keep at least four five six different or sorry four five six units uh, digits past the decimal place um, times 10 to the 24. Now if we round this to the nearest sig fig, here we have three digits given to us even previously, so it'll just be rounded to this digit here. So it would be uh, 1.40 times 10 to the 24 molecules of C2H6, and we're done. So I'm hoping that you figured out that by using the fact table method, not necessarily a formula or a magic triangle, uh, that you were able to solve these problems and work through them without causing too much anxiety. Hope this helped.